Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cathay General Bank Corp's first quarter of 2024 earnings conference call. My name is Gary, and I'll be your coordinator for today. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. Following the prepared remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to participate in this portion of the call, please press star followed by one at any time during the conference. If assistance is needed at any time during the call, please press star followed by zero and a coordinator will be happy to assist you. Today's call is being recorded and will be available for replay at www.cathaygeneralbankcorp.com. Now I would like to turn the call over to Georgia Lowe, Investor Relations of Cathay General Bank Corp. Please go ahead. Thank you, Gary, and good afternoon. Here to discuss the financial results today are Mr. Chang Liu, our President and Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Hang Chen, our Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, we wish to remind you that the speakers on this call may make forward-looking statements within the meaning of the applicable provisions of the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995 concerning future results and events, and that these statements are subject to certain risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially. These risks and uncertainties are further described in the company's annual report on Form 10-K for the year ended December 31, 2023, at Item 1A in particular, and in other reports and filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission from time to time. As such, we caution you not to place undue reliance on such forward-looking statements. Any forward-looking statement speaks only as of the date on which it is made and except as required by law. We undertake no obligation to update or review any forward-looking statements to reflect future circumstances, developments, or events, or the occurrence of an anticipated event. This afternoon, Cathay Journal Bank Corp. issued an earnings release outlining its first quarter 2024 results. To obtain a copy of our earnings release, as well as our earnings presentation, please visit our website at www.cathaygeneralbankcorp.com. After comments by management today, we will open up this call for questions. I will now turn the call over to our President and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Chang Liu. Thank you, Georgia, and good afternoon. Welcome to our 2024 first quarter earnings conference call. This afternoon, we reported net income of $71.4 million for first quarter 2024, a 13.4% decre decrease as compared to $82.5 million the previous quarter. Our net income this quarter included a $9 million or $0.09 cents per diluted share mark-to-market loss from equity securities, and a $2.9 million, or $0.03 cents per diluted share accrual for an increase in the FDIC special assessment. Diluted earnings per share decreased by 13.5% to $0.98 cents per share for the first quarter of 2024, as compared to $1.13 per share in the previous quarter. In first quarter 2024, total gross loans decreased $119 million, or 2.4% annualized, primarily driven by increases of, of $92 million, or 3.8% annualized in commercial real estate loans, offset by a decrease of $172 million, or 20.9% annualized in commercial loans, and $40 million, or 37.7% annualized in construction loans. Due to slower than expected loan growth in first quarter 2024, we have revised our overall loan growth guidance for 2024 to range between 3% and 4%. We've added slide 6 to show the percentage of loans in which major loan portfolio that are either fixed rate or hybrid loans in their fixed rate period. Our loan portfolio consists of 64% fixed rate and hybrid loans excluding fixed to float interest rate swaps on 4% of total loans. Fixed rate loans comprise 30% of total loans and hybrid loans in fixed rate period comprise 34% of total loans. We continue to monitor our commercial real estate loans, turning to slide eight of our earnings deck. As of 31st, 2024, the average loan to value of our CRE loans was 50%. As of March 31st, 2024, our retail property loan portfolio as shown on slide nine comprised of 23% of our total commercial real estate loan portfolio or 12% of our total loan portfolio. 90% of the $2.3 billion in retail property loan is secured by retail store, building, neighborhood, mixed use, or strip centers, only 9% is secured by shopping centers. On slide 10, office property loans represent 15% of our total commercial real estate loan portfolio, or 8% of our total loan portfolio. 
Only 34% of the $1.5 billion in office property loans are collateralized by pure office buildings. Only 3% are in central, central, business, central business districts. 38% of office property loans are collateralized by office retail stores, office mixed use, and medical offices, and the remainder, 28%, are collateralized by office condos. For first quarter 2024, we reported net charge-offs of $1.1 million as compared to $4.1 million in the previous quarter. Our non-accrual loans were 0.5% of total loans as of March 31, 2024, which increased by $31.4 million to $98.1 million as compared to the previous quarter. The increase in non-accrual loans during first quarter 2024 came mainly from a $23 million low loan-to-value construction loan in New York, which has passed to maturity, and two theater loans totaling $21 million. Turning to slide 12, as of March 31, 2024, classified loans increased to $244 million from $200 million as of December 30, 31, 2023. And our special mention loans decreased to $249 million from $308 million as of December 31, 2023. So for first quarter 2024, there was a small decrease in total special mention and classified loans. We recorded a provision for credit loss of $1.9 million the first quarter of 2024, as compared to a $1.7 million in provision for credit losses for the, pre- for the previous quarter. Total deposits increased by $520.8 million, or 10.8% annualized during the first quarter of 2024. Total court deposits increased $210.9 million, or 8.4% annualized, and total time deposits increased $731.7 million, or 31.3% during the first quarter of 2024, mainly due to our Lunar New Year CD campaign. We expect the overall deposit growth to continue in an estimated range between 4% and 5%. As of March 31, 2024, total uninsured deposits were $8.1 billion, net of $0.7 billion in collateralized deposits, or 40.7% of total deposits. We have an unused borrowing capacity from the Federal Home Loan Bank of $6.9 billion and unpledged securities of $1.7 billion as of March 31, 2024. These sources of available liquidity more than cover 100% of uninsured and uncollateralized deposits as of March 31, 2024. I will now turn the floor over to our Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Heng Cheng, to discuss the quarterly financial results in more detail. Thank you, Chang, and good afternoon, everyone. For Q1 2024, net income decreased by $11.1 million, or 13.4%, to 71.4 million compared to 82.5 million in the previous quarter, primarily due to a 9 million unrealized loss of equity securities in Q1 2024 versus a 9 million unrealized gain on equity securities in Q4 2023 an additional 2.9 million accrual in Q1 2024 for the FDIC Special Assessment. Q1 2024 interest margin was 3.05% as compared to 3.27% for the previous quarter. Interest recoveries and prepayment penalties did not change the net interest margin for Q1 2024 versus an increase of one basis point for the previous quarter. We estimate our net interest margin for 2024 to be between 3.05 to 3.15% based on the expectation for two rate cuts in 2024 for the first rate cut in September and the second rate cut in December. Our prior net interest margin guidance was based on three rate cuts, with the first rate cut being in June. Given that 64% of our loans, fixed rate or hybrid loans in their fixed rate period, the lower number of rate cuts negatively impacted our net interest margin guidance. Non-interest income during the first quarter of 2024 decreased by 16.5 million to 6.6 million when compared to 
$5.1 million the previous quarter. The decrease was primarily due to an $18 million increase in unrealized loss on equity securities between the two quarters. Non-interest expense decreased by $17.3 million, or 15.6%, to $93.2 million in Q1 2024 when compared to $110.5 million the, the prior quarter. This decrease was primarily due to a net decrease of $8.3 million from the FDIC Special Assessment, $11.7 million in lower amortization of solar tax credit investments, and 1.3 million uh, lower in professional expense, offset by an increase of 3.5 million in salary and benefits, which included a 2 million true up for 2023 bonuses and a 1.4 million seasonally higher payroll expense and an acceleration of $1 million of contributions uh, into Q1 2024 as compared to the previous quarter. The effective tax rate for Q1 2024 was 10.76% as compared to 11.28% the previous quarter. With the closing of the new solar tax credit, uh, fund investment in Q1 2024, we expect an effective tax rate of between 12% and 13% for 2024. We now expect total 20, 2024 solar tax credit investment amortizations of 32.5 million with $8 million in Q2 of 2024 and $9 million each in Q3 and Q4. As of March 31, 2024, our Tier 1 leverage capital ratio increased to 10.71% as compared to 10.55% as of December 31, 2023. Our tier our Tier 1 risk-based capital ratio increased to 13.08% from 12.83% as of December 31, 2023, and our total risk-based capital ratio increased to 14.55% from 14.3% as of December 31st, 2023. Thank you, Hang. We will now proceed to the question and answer portion of the call. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question at this time, please press the star then one key on your touchtone telephone. We ask that you please limit yourself to one question and one follow-up question. You may then return to the queue. If your question has been answered or you wish to remove yourself from the queue, please press star then two. To prevent any background noise, we ask that you please place yourself on mute once your question has been stated. The first question today is from Matthew Clark with Piper Sandler. Please go ahead. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for the questions. Um, just the fir uh, first one around the, the, the margin. Um, could you give us the, the average margin in the month of March and then the uh, spot rate on interest bearing or total deposits at the end of March? Yeah, uh, the NIM for the month of March was 2.99%. Uh, and then the spot rate for uh, interest bearing deposits at the end of March was 3.8%. Uh, okay, got it. Okay, and then just the, the low income housing uh, tax Credit amortization. I think it was 8.2 million in the first quarter. Is that still expected to be 10.5 million uh, per quarter for the next three? Uh, it might be closer to 10, but it's okay. It jumps around. 
Yep. Okay. Okay, and then just the um, the reserve on on your office portfolio is it consistent with the overall theory reserve, or has it changed at all? Uh, Matthew, since we didn't have any uh, new office non accruals, it's still uh, hold on, let me. It's still uh, it's still the same as the general reserve. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. The next question is from Brandon King with Truist. Please go ahead. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my questions. So on the, the NIM guidance, what do you think takes you from the, the lower end of the range to the higher end of the range? Could you just give us kind of the, the puts and takes as far as how you're thinking about things? Yeah, uh, Brandon, uh, you know, one, except the higher rates we paid uh, for the six-month CDs in the Chinese New Year promotion, we we we, uh, we think uh, we're we're getting less uh, deposit pricing pressure. So as the as the quarter goes on, uh, the CD pricing is going to be based on the. Uh, Six month for one year treasury, so that's going to it's going to decrease compared to where it is now. So we'll get less deposit pressure, and then meanwhile, uh, our new loans are at market rates. Uh, for example, residential mortgage, our new loans are low sevens. Uh, so it's going to all our new loan production is going to pull up the, the, the average rate on our loans. And then we have rough, uh, we have some uh, uh, loans that are repricing uh, during the CRE loans that are repricing. So that will also uh, uh, improve the rate on the loan. So, so we see the NIM, uh, a little bit lower in Q2, maybe flat to Q2 and Q3, and then Q4 would be much better. Got it. And that's because of the rate cuts, right? The, the impact of the rate cuts? Yes. Is that, okay. Yes. Uh, okay. That makes sense. And, and then could you update us on the CD repricing uh, or the CD maturities for the rest of the year? Uh, yeah, let me uh we have it here uh so in the second quarter we have uh, two point one billion in CDs. They're repricing well the yield of the maturing CDs are four point five seven uh Q three uh, 3.6 billion, and the yield on on those CDs is 4.82. So that reflects uh, our Chinese New Year promotion uh, for the six month term. Uh, Q4, uh, 2 billion of CDs are maturing. The yield is 4.67, and then in Q1 2025, we have. Uh, uh, 1.9 billion uh, maturing, and the yield there is at 4.18. And there, it's some of the lower yield reflects the fact that our our Chinese New Year promotion, our one year rate was at 4.88, so that was lower than the six month rate. Got it. Got it. Very helpful. I will hop back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Gary Tenner with DA Davidson. Please go ahead. Thanks. Good afternoon. Uh, a little bit of a follow-up on the deposit and NIM question. I mean, just in a in a year where you know you don't have a need for massive deposit growth, given what the loan growth outlook looks like, you know, how aggressive can you be 
on uh, deposit pricing maybe outside the CD portfolio is that it's going to roll lower anyway? Uh, well, Gary, I, you know, uh, I'm the final stop for uh, rate concessions and uh, at CAFE, and uh, we're seeing much less. So when we... Uh, So we're facing less uh, pressure uh, to raise new deposits because our, we expect our loan growth to be slower, and, and so uh, so we're so the mindset, uh, particularly uh, later on in the year, is to you know be a little bit more aggressive. And, pushing down the rates. And again, the fact that the Treasury's uh, at some point, the one-year Treasury is, start, is going to start declining, uh, that will help us. Right. I, I guess my, what I was trying to ask, perhaps I didn't ask it well enough, is outside of the CD book, do you have the ability, uh, do you think, to be to, to push down or nibble on kind of deposit pricing to push it a little bit lower even ahead of a Fed cut? Or do you not think you have the ability to do that? Uh, now, we, uh, a big, a, a good proportion of our money market uh, book is, is effectively tied to Fed funds. Uh, so, as soon as there's a Fed rate cut on those depositors, we're going to cut uh, the rate by 25 basis points. And then we plan on for uh, other money market uh, depositors, you know, maybe we'll, we'll reduce those by 10 or 15 basis points. So, and then we have some now accounts that are also uh, tied to, tied to uh, Fed funds. Got it. Thank you. So it's just not the CDs that won't be able to reprice. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Again, to ask a question, please press star then one. The next question is from Andrew Terrell with Stevens. Please go ahead. Hey, good afternoon. Um, just a quick follow up on the margin. Um, just on the on the discussion around the cadence throughout the year, it sounded like flattish in 2Q and 3Q and then lifts into 4Q, uh, kind of commensurate with your Fed cut assumptions. I'm, I'm just curious, is the flattish commentary, is that off of the spot margin you referenced or the, the March margin of 299, or, or do you think that the 2Q margin is, is flat to the 305 reported in the first quarter? Uh, no, it'll be down a couple basis points. You know, uh, P2, there's two 30-day months, so that helps us because we have so many residential mortgages. Uh, okay, so maybe down just a couple of basis points in the second quarter and then flattish in 3Q and then starts to lift? Yes, yes. Okay. Um and then if I, I was looking at the, the core operating expense lift in the first quarter, and it was maybe a little more than what I was expecting. And if I am doing the math right, kind of tracking a, a few million dollars ahead of where your full year expense growth guidance implies. So I guess my question is just how much of the, the kind of 1Q lift in core operating expenses was more seasonality driven. And then just curious as we move throughout the year, um, where are you going to see quarterly expense reductions in the core OPEX to, to land in that 3 to 3.5% three uh, growth guidance? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, in my comments, I, I, I try to cover uh, uh, the, the, you know, the FICA hit, the uh, bonus catch-up, the, the fact that we accelerated uh, – are uh, some uh, charitable contributions from April to March. Uh, we also, uh, because our loan growth was uh, was negative, 
we we also had uh, less uh, loan origination cost uh, capitalized. So I, I, you know, based on kind of our looking at the flow of expenses, uh, we think we'll be uh, close to that three and a half percent upper range. Okay. Um, understood. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. The next question is from Chris McGrady with KBW. Please go ahead. Oh, great. Thanks. Um, last quarter you talked about, you know, a key to your guide for the margin was, I think, stability in, the, in non interest bearing, which, which fell again this quarter. What's, um, have you revised that assumption for the back half of the year in your guide? Uh, we, we spent a lot of time uh, looking at the, at the DDA by branch, and uh, we think some of it uh, is, is seasonal because of uh, the Chinese New Year, the payment of taxes, around, you know. Uh, uh, the, uh, so uh, it, it's been stable uh, in, in March and so far in April in terms of the DDA balance. And then uh, China, I, I think, tends to build up later in the year. As the customer's kind of business flow and the volume continues, some of the DDA balance should pick back up. Okay. Okay, great. And then the follow-up, I guess, is, is two-part. One, um, it, it would seem like net interest income dollars would have a little bit more downward pressure in Q2, stability Q3, and then growth in Q4. And then I just want to make sure I heard Matt's question on the amortization. So, so Q2 should be somewhere like $18 million combined uh, solar and, and low income, right? Eight plus 10? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. okay. And then the, you agree with my logic on the uh, net interest income cadence on a quarterly basis? Yeah, it's It'll be down a little bit more in uh, Q2. Uh, we, we benefit from uh, the two 30-day months in the Q2. And then in Q3, uh, well, you know, we have half a month of the Fed cut that, that will happen in September. Uh, and uh, hopefully some repricing from our Chinese New Year deposits. So. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank, thanks, Hank. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for your participation. I will now turn the call back over to Cathay Bit General Bank Corps Management for closing remarks. I would like to thank everyone for joining us on our call, and we look forward to speaking with, speaking with you at our next quarterly earnings release call. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation in today's conference. This concludes the presentation. You may now disconnect. Good day.